Hello. Today's story of magical change is the story of the lovely apple maid by James Riordan. So get yourself comfortable and let's enjoy. Once upon a time, a prince went hunting in the forest. The day was warm and he soon felt thirsty, yet nowhere could he find a spring from which to drink. As he looked for water, he came at last upon an apple tree which bore three ripe apples. On one side, they were red like rubies. On the other, they were as golden as the sun. It made his mouth water just to look at them. Without more ado, he reached up and picked an apple. Then, taking out his hunting knife, he split the fruit in two. No sooner was the apple open than out leapt a fair maid to the ground. The prince quite lost his tongue, for the girl was as bare and lovely as the clear sky at dawn. As she stood before him, the girl said just one word, water, then disappeared, plop, just like a bubble bursting. The prince rubbed his eyes in wonder. Had he been seeing things? Perhaps his thirst was playing tricks on him. So he picked a second apple from the tree took out his hunting knife and split that open too. At once, a naked girl leapt out, even prettier than the first. Before he could move, she cried out, water, water, then vanished in the twinkling of an eye. If I cut the third apple open, the prince thought, it will surely be the same. As there is no water, the girl will disappear. So he plucked it carefully from the tree and held it safe until he came upon a woodland pool. Standing on the bank, he held the apple just above the pool and cut it rapidly in two. At once, a naked maid hopped out crying, water, 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 and then splash, she fell into the pool. The prince helped her out, dripping wet from top to toe she stood before him trembling, and she blushed rose red before his gaze. As for the prince, he fell in love so deeply that he simply said, Dear apple maid, will you be my wife? She sighed so sadly that it was like a knife thrust into his heart. Best to forget me, she said at last, for I and my two sisters are in a wizard's power. We are daughters of a king and were changed to apples as we went walking in the forest. Can I not save you? asked the prince. You have saved me once, she said, but the wizard has cast one more spell. If you can find me in my new form, I shall be saved. Then I will gladly be your wife. With that, she trembled and was gone, taken away on the wind. The prince looked this way and that, then stumbled on through the grove and the glade, not knowing where to go. Suddenly, he heard a shout. Hey there, fellow, wait for me. Turning round, the prince saw a tall man hurrying after him. Pray take me with you, the tall man said. You will need my skill. Who are you? And then what is your skill? The sad prince asked. My name, sir, is Long, the man replied. And my skill lies in my growing. I shall show it to you soon. The two men set off together and had not gone very far when they overtook another man. He was a little fellow with a belly like a tub. Stop, he shouted out. Take me with you and use my skill. Who are you? The sad prince said. And what pray? Is your skill? My name, sir, is Stout, the man replied. As for my skill, 
I will show you by and by. Off went the three companions through the wood. After a time, they came upon another man with his eyes bound tight. Who are you, fellow? The prince called out. And why are your eyes so bound? After all, you cannot see the road. My dear sir, it is just because I see so well that my eyes are bound, the man replied. If I did not wear my blindfold, I would set fire to all around. That keen is my gaze. That's why my name is Keen Eyes. Since your sight is so sharp, the prince went on, look hard and tell me which way to go to find my apple maid. Keen Eyes removed his blindfold and stared hard through the trees. A way was cut by fire wherever his gaze fell. Well, master, he said at last, your maid is a long way off, some 300 miles or more. At the bottom of a deep black sea there lies a shell in which there is a golden ring. That ring is your beloved apple maid. The prince was in despair. Don't worry, sir, said Long. My friends and I will fetch her right away. With that, he set stout on one shoulder and keen eyes on the other, and then he began to grow. When he was three times higher than the tallest tree, he stepped out boldly for the sea. In no time at all, he was standing on the shore. As Keen Eyes pointed out the shell, Long stretched his arms as far as they would go, but they were not long enough for him to reach the shell. Just a moment, said Stout. Let me see if I can help. Stout huffed and puffed until his belly grew and grew. Then he lay down by the water's edge and began to drink. Soon the level of the sea had dropped so low that Long could reach the seabed with ease. With a happy shout, he drew the shell out of the water. Long then took the ring out of the shell, set his friends upon his shoulders and strode off ten miles in one step. But he'd not gone far when he became quite tired. After all, Stout had half the sea inside him. So he set down the tubby man to empty out the sea. In a moment, the whole valley was filled with water, forming a big black lake. Just in the nick of time, Stout climbed onto Long's shoulders and all three made their way through the valley lake. At last, they returned to the waiting prince. Here is the magic ring, Long said with a smile. The apple maid will be inside. Just drop it on the ground and you will see. As soon as the ring touched the ground, it changed into the maid, just as pale and pretty as before. So bright was her smile that the sun hid behind a cloud for shame. She thanked the prince with all her heart. It's not me you have to thank, the prince replied. It's my three friends, long, stout and, and keen eyes. But for them, I, I could not have saved you. A cloud still seemed to hang over the young girl's brow. I am happy to be saved, she sighed. But as long as my two sisters are not free, I cannot be your wife. The wizard still has them under his spell. Even as she spoke, two white doves flew down and settled on her arm, cooing softly. They were the maid's elder sisters. Just then, Keen Eyes turned his back and fixed his gaze upon a far-off rock. As soon as he removed his blindfold, the rock began to spit and sizzle and fall away, showing the wizard in his cave. With an evil scream, the wicked man went up in smoke. The same moment he fell down dead, the two white doves changed back into princesses. They wept for joy and kissed each other, delighted to be free. 
So now the party set off with the prince back to his palace. The two sisters on Long's back, the apple maid hand in hand with the happy prince and stout leading keen eyes. And when they all arrived, the grand wedding was prepared. As for the two princesses, they soon found husbands of their own. After all, who would refuse a wife so pretty and indeed the daughter of a king? When the weddings were all done, the prince's companions said that, with regret, they had to leave. We must go about the world, said Long. And help good souls in need, said Stout. An idle palace life is not for us, said Keen Eyes. Despite the prince's pleas, they would not change their minds. So Long, Stout, and Keen Eyes went into the world and, for all I know, are still somewhere in the land looking for folk to aid. As for the prince and the lovely apple maid, they lived happily together evermore. And if they've not died, they surely live on still. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you soon for more story time with me, Mr Westgate. Take care.